are receiving some of that is oftentimes our sense of pride, our sense of holding on to what we believe the way things should be, the way I want it to be, rather than to allow God to unfold his presence in our lives. And that's a walk of faith. That's a walk of trust. And trust is something that's built over time. If you've ever been in a family home where the couple, this, this doesn't happen in your homes, I know, are giving each other the silent treatment, there's not a whole lot being said, but there's a whole lot being communicated. You can feel the emotions in the room. If you ever walk into a, a different household than your own and, and they're doing that, you're kind of like, what's going on here? <laughs> you get the message. Some of us, because of our emotions, are giving God the silent treatment. We get to a point in our lives where we feel, oh, I shouldn't be angry with God, or I, I don't want to express that negative emotion, so we stuff it. God knows our hearts. He wants to hear from us. The Psalms are a beautiful example of David struggling in that relationship with God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus quotes that on the cross. God wants us to express our emotions. And in any good relationship, if I don't express it in words, I'm going to show you in action. Kids do that all the time. We tell them things like, don't you be angry with me. They're going to be angry. Anger is a healthy, natural emotion to have. It's what you do with it. I'd much rather have somebody tell me they're angry than show me they're angry. God wants us to tell him how we feel. He wants to heal our brokenness. He wants to walk with us. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. God is calling us to closer communion. We are not alone. We are not alone in this journey. This is a wonderful example of that. Uh, at this hour in the morning, we have everyone gathered here. But things do get in the way. Our sense of pride blocks a sense of humility of opening ourselves up either to other people or to God. And the way that we block that it's often in our emotions of anger and resentment because we tend to hold on to those negative emotions. And we hold on to it with such tenacity. If somebody's hurt me, I have justifiable righteousness or anger towards them. I'm in the right. Jesus is telling us that's not the issue you got to let go of the anger. You've got to let go and forgive. In jail, it's easy to see there's a lot of people there that are blaming the world for the reason that they're there. And uh, they would like the world to change, but not themselves. We cannot change anyone outside of right here. Jesus tells us, forgive others their trespasses as we forgive, and he'll forgive us. Oftentimes we block God's love and forgiveness because we fail to forgive from ourselves. We fail to forgive those that have hurt us. And I'm talking about even when we were kids, we hold on to things forever. We got to drop them. We got to let go of it. 
We also have to get to a point in our lives where we accept that radical forgiveness that Jesus has given us by allowing us to forgive the, the most difficult person we need to forgive, which is ourselves. For the things that we've done, and the things that we've left undone, for that is what God calls us to do. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We are called to be the living presence of God in the world today. Salvation history is still unfolding. Our words are very important. When we look at the scripture, we see that the word God is speaking brings about creation. <coughs> the words that the prophets speak to the kings that are out of line with God pretty courageous acts speaking the voice of the prophet. Sometimes we are called to do that in the here and now in our lives. But the strongest message is that Jesus shows us in his life that we are called to live it out, to be the breath of God for one another, to build each other up. There's a focus a lot of times on the power of the word. And you hear a lot of different communication type seminars and things like that. And they're very strong on, you know, it depends on who is speaking, what's being spoken, who are you talking to, looking at all the different little variables. But when we look at that for us, who is speaking the word of God? Who is proclaiming the word of God? What is being spoken? The gospel, the good news, that we're forgiven, that our lives can be radically changed now, in the here and now. 